we're running out of time. You know, take care, uh, uh, do whatever we got to do to keep keep the course that we're on. We're managers and uh, we stay the course. But it takes a long time to kind of turn the ship the right way to manage the resource, you know. And we have to do that. So we have to work together, all of us. We have to come to the table and, and, uh, and try to figure it out. What is happening here? But I, I, uh, I have hope. I, I don't, uh, I, I, we will, Indian tribes will always be managers. We have to be managers. There's no other way. As we see it now and going out like not even 50 years, going out 20, 25 years, at, at the status quo level, our, our berries are disappearing, our huckleberries. We're gatherers and we're harvesters. And our, our choke cherries are disappearing. All of our medicines in the mountain are disappearing. Our salmon is disappearing. Our shellfish out there and all of the, the, the food chain of, of life is disappearing. And so, and clean water, you know, clean water, quality and quantity of water is life. And, and, and uh, you know, people, people don't seem to, uh, I don't want to say they don't care about that, but they don't, uh, they, they just keep destroying the, 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 the water instead of protecting the water and protecting the, the runoffs and everything else, they keep destroying it. And so that poisons our, our water system and our, our aquifers and everything. We have to be there watching all the time. We have to watch the watersheds. We have to watch our, our habitat. We have to protect our habitat. We've got we to work with the timber industry and make them plant trees and harvest trees. You know, we're, we want them to be here. We want the farmers to be here. You know, we want everybody to be in place. Don't move away, otherwise you'll have houses there. And this country is made out of laws, you know, but nobody enforces any laws anymore. Nobody enforces anything. They want people to volunteer. Majority of them don't, they don't want to sit at the table. They're satisfied with the status quo. They figure if they sit at the table, they're going to lose something, you know. There's nobody managing the sea lines. I mean, there's, uh, you know, there's a couple, couple uh, biologists that are, uh, that are, uh, you know, we're managing the salmon, we're managing the oysters, the shellfish, and all of that, but there's nobody managing sea lions out there, the predator of the salmon. You know, and uh, so, you know, we gotta have somebody doing that. And I'll tell you a story about farm fishing, because my son, my two sons, my oldest son and my youngest son, fishes on the Squally River, as I told you, and the Manchester net pens, farm pens, are across the, the way from Seattle. Seattle's over here and the net pens are over here. And about 200,000 farm fish got away from these net pens. Part of them went south down toward my way and part of them went north. They just kind of went in, well, my boy and, and his brother were there uh, fishing and uh, they called me up one day and they said, Dad, you want, uh, you want some, uh, some Atlantic salmon, some farm fish? I said, oh, you know, we don't eat that crap, you know, and I tell them, <laughs> we did, we're joking, you know, and, and, uh, and they said, neither does the seals or sea lions. They ate all the Nisqually fish, the wild fish that's coming up Nisqually. They wouldn't touch one of the, they're all in the net. They wouldn't touch one, one farm fish because they got, you know, they got 
poison in them. You know, whatever poison, I don't know what the hell poison you're talking about. You know, they're just some stuff they put in their food or what the hell ever they put, you know. But the sea lions and the seals would not eat them fish. So that tells you, you know, you don't, you don't eat anything that the animals don't eat. You know, that's, that's our rule of law. <laughs> So there's some things we have to do. And I hope that the government will start making changes as we go on this journey, this journey of life. And, uh, uh, you know, we've been way back here and we're, got, we're up to here now. Now our journey is continuing on. And, and the food that we talk about is sustainability of our life. It's the food that, that, uh, that we enjoy. We have our ceremonies and we have our marriages and we have our children, we name our children. All of these things are part of our journey in life for our children. And so I hope the federal government starts making some changes in this management of the habitat, making changes of the of the the air pollution, making changes of of uh, how the technology is used to enhance and make it better for all of us. You know, we're in a time now that we have the technology to make it better. That it's not always used, but it it's there in front of us. You know, we can start putting back what we've taken out of the earth. You know, we can start, there's technology of putting it back and, and uh, we can do that. Now somewhere we have to make that change. It, it's not changing right now, it's a status quo. And the status quo we don't have long. We don't have long here to, to but we have to somewhere make a transition. The federal government has to make a transition into the political will of the people. They're the ones that has to make it happen. So, and and that that's hope to all of us. So them are them are things that, that that are the positive side of life when you can go up and watch your salmon spawning in the rivers, you know, and, and it gives you the bright the bright lights that come on, you know, that this, this, this journey we're on it has a lot of good things that are happening to all of us and, and they'll continue to happen if we all can see out further than we're looking. So we're going we're gonna to be there and, uh, you know, I only got 50 more years to go, so I'll be here doing what we're doing. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>